And here's a common problem with what p people aren't learning in certifications, and they aren't learning as personal trainers. Yes, you learn the principles of muscle physiology, and yes, you learn the principles of adaptive response, but what you don't learn is the individuality of all that, and what happens is the individual nature of how and when a body responds to training stimulus. And this is another reason why things like boot camps and CrossFit uh, make no sense if you understand the individual variant in recovery capacity. So you learn about principles, but they don't tell you anything about how an individual and their genetics, metabolic genetics, uh, personal genetics, vital stats, will all have a bearing on um, athletic history, will all have a bearing in terms of how that individual responds to um, a training stimuli. So um, again, this is something that's not being learned and this is one of the reasons why coaching makes the most sense. And I refer to the book um, Optimize, uh, Designing um, Periodization Workouts by Kramer and Fleck, two, two um, very well established academics uh, in the area of exercise physiology and, and program design. And they're the first ones to say um, you know that that coaches and trainers uh, each person responds uniquely and differently to a given workout and the overall requirements this is really important the overall requirements for various training characteristics of muscle may be the same in other words you learn the principles of adaptation and that's the same for everybody however the progression timing and approach to achieving them are going to be different individually because of inherent genetic differences among people and that's what everyone seems to be missing you learn about specificity you learn about overload you learn about adaptive response nobody's talking about what i talk about in my book the able approach in terms of uh, recovery capacity which is individual and internal biochemical and hormonal responses which are individual and that requires a coach who can appropriately and properly read a client's biofeedback and this leads to another um, thing about how I coach in terms of the triangle of awareness being um, the goal to have equal side balance triangle between your mental realm, your emotional realm, and your physical behavioral realm, your physiological realm. A lot of times because of uh, life stressors and what people are engaged in in real life has a determining um, factor in terms of their mental state of fatigue. So just because someone's physically able to perform a workout without uh, a performance decrement doesn't mean there isn't a certain amount of mental fatigue and mental burnout going on or emotional fatigue and emotional burnout going on and if you're not assessing that in an ongoing way and you're expecting linear results then you're not doing your client a very good service and if you're a trainee who keeps trying to think you can push through that and that uh, training is your stress release um, if you're not connecting these sides of, of your realms of awareness emotional mental and physical and you just think you can um, override uh, mental fatigue based upon the rest of your life then you're likely to get hurt uh, you're likely to get become ill um, I see these things all the time people's immune systems get worn right down from trying to do it all and thinking that these are separate realms even though they're stressed at home or at work they go in and they try to hit a home run in their workouts they end up getting sick because their immune system gets so depressed so again these certification programs they're so incomplete all they're teaching is about adoptive response and implying that that's true across the board in a linear sense and it's just not individuals respond to training stimuli in a very individual way and they progress in an individual way and that makes um, it essential to be able to learn to read someone else's biofeedback and that's why coaching is so much more beneficial because it's an ongoing interaction that, that um, has to do with long-term uh, impacts of training stimuli and being able to tell a client or an athlete when they need to back off, when they need to pull back a little bit and when they need to hit the ground running. So again, um, a lot of stuff about what you learn in these courses in fitness is incomplete because it doesn't take the client into account. It talks about principles of adaptive response and it talks about the principles of exercise physiology, but it doesn't tell you and doesn't talk about how all these things are individuated. And I discuss these in my book, uh, The Able Approach, and why it's so essential to become adept at reading um, human biofeedback and what it means moving forward. So again, looking things in short-term windows can often lead to long-term consequences. So uh, um, again, just to reiterate, 
learning the principles of exercise science and how a muscle adapts is not complete because it doesn't speak to the individual nature of said responses and how long that may take from one individual to the next given their genetic background, um, athletic history, current life circumstances, etc. So uh, stay tuned, keep sending me your questions and hopefully you know we'll start getting past just scratching the surface of what is passing for knowledge out there because it's really starting to bug me.